Hi, uh, I'm Daniel. Uh, I'm in the data and analytics services group at, at NERSC, and I'm excited to be here today to talk to you about um, using Python at NERSC. So <clears throat> welcome. Uh, I'm sure you've had lots of welcomes today. Um, so in this presentation, I'll kind of give you uh, an introduction to the basics of using Python at NERSC, as well as some tips and sort of best practices that are kind of specific to using Python on the NERSC systems. Um, I'll also give an incredibly brief um, getting started with Python on GPUs. And um, I know we have the Q&A doc, um, but there might be a time for a question or two at the end as well. So not covered in this talk is using Jupyter, which is a very popular way of using Python at NERSC. Um, for that, you'll have to wait for the next presentation. So using Python. So at NERSC, we provide an Anaconda Python distribution for users. So we provide that through the Python module. So when you log into Perlmutter, um, you can type module load Python and then now the Python that's available um, is going to be the one that we've provided for you. So kind of demonstrate those commands here. Type module load Python, then you can enter the interactive Python um, REPL, and then you can start using Python at NERSC. Um, at the bottom, if you look at these slides later on, I've included links to in our documentation in a lot of the slides. So if you want to reference find more detail or find out where you should look in our documentation, um, you can find these slides on the event page later on and use the URLs and slides. Um, so a little more about the Python module. Um, that Python module actually um, provides Conda. So if you want to use a your own Conda environment or use the one that we provide, um, there's a lot more in there. So it's um, after you module load Python, you see that you should have Conda available, and we also initialize Conda for you. So sometimes when you first set up Conda on your laptop or a workstation or something, you it'll typically prompt you to run a command like Conda init, which modifies your shell startup files. Um, at NERSC, you do not need to do that. Um, that's all provided in the Python module. Um, so if you look at the Conda environments that are available um, by default, uh, we have a couple included already for you. So there's the base environment, which includes over or nearly 300 pre-installed packages. Um, we also have two, like a lazy H5Pi and another one called lazy MPI for Pi, which kind of demonstrate a basic Conda environment using kind of parallel versions of those special libraries for use on, on their system. So there's more information about that in our, our docs. We don't have enough time to really cover that here. Um, so the, the kind of the next steps you can take um, are creating your own Conda environment. Um, so I'm highlighting here the commands. You module load Python, you provide Conda, so you can just use the typical Conda create name your environment, and then tell it which packages you want to install. And then you can use Conda Activate, and then now you're using your own custom um, environment. Um, you could also use Shifter. So there'll be a talk about Shifter later on as well. Um, so that's another um, good way to use Python is to, if you have all of your, all of your software and its dependencies in a um, container, you could use U Shifter to, to launch Python within that container. So on the right here, I also I'm highlighting this XXX. This is not the Python you're looking for. Um, so if you do not load do this module load Python when you log into Perlmutter, if you type which Python, it'll show you this Python under user bin. So this is the system Python, and it's probably best to avoid this. This is usually not the Python that you want to use. Um, some tips for installing packages. Um, so for the most part, just using conda install package or pip install package should work. Um, some things to be aware of is when you're using conda, those packages come from different conda channels. Um, the two common ones are defaults and condaforge. 
Um, it's usually okay to mix packages from these different channels, but sometimes the kind of dependencies, some of some packages require different versions of each other and you could get into trouble. So it's always a good idea to, in your environment to, to have this conda list command nearby so you can kind of see what's currently in your environment and don't be afraid to just start over if, if your environment gets a little too complicated. Um, some packages need to be compiled, compiled with the compiler wrappers that you may have heard about in talks earlier today. Um, for example, MPI for Pi um, and H5Pi um, should be compiled with the compiler wrappers on NERSC. Um, and another gotcha to be aware of on Perlmutter is CUDA Toolkit. So um, more and more users want to use GPU kind of enabled code in their Python packages. And one sort of tricky thing is that by default, there is a CUDA Toolkit module that's loaded in your environment when you log into um, Perlmutter. Um, and if you're installing packages from ConduForge, um, Sometimes Conda Forge will install CUDA Toolkit as well, depending on how the package that you're installing specifies its dependencies. So if you're using, if you have a CUDA Toolkit in your Conda environment, you may run into conflicts with the CUDA Toolkit modules. You may need to unload the CUDA Toolkit module. Um, another thing to be aware of with PIP, um, a common issue that we see happen is that, um, you know, PIP will try to cache packages. So you want to watch out for that. Like if you're trying to reinstall a new version of a package or you're interactively developing some, some package, you have to be aware that sometimes PIP will cache what you're trying to install. So there's a couple commands like this no cacheter or force reinstall that kind of help PIP um, help you tell pip to like you know really reinstall the package from scratch um, you also want to watch out for this pip install dash dash user um, because that will install a package kind of outside of your conda environment in this kind of um, a directory that's under your home directory but it, it's kind of outside of um, it's not your package will no longer be kind of sandboxed to your conda environment so if you you know work on something else and you switch over to that other con environment, you might be picking up this other package you installed um, because that package lives outside of the conda environments. Um, so that's something to be watch out for with PIP. Um, so just a quick summary of all of that. I think we touched on all this. So when you're using Python at NERSC, it's always a good idea to use con environments or shifter containers to kind of sandbox your Python environment. Um, we also recommend when you do install your software on the file system to use this global common software um, and then your project directory for, for best performance. Um, yes, a re reminder to use the compiler wrappers for especially for building MPI for Pi and maybe some other packages. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's kind of the quick overview of Python at NERSC. Um, so then very quick introduction to um, Python on GPUs. So if you're just getting started with GPUs from Python, um, it's important you kind of realize that, that NumPy and SciPy, which are two of the most common popular scientific um, packages um, in Python, they can't really make use of the GPU right out of the box. Um, so there are a lot of, um, a lot of Python GPU frameworks out there. So if you're just looking for kind of replacements for existing code that you already written with NumPy or SciPy or Pandas or Scikit-Learn, um, then the CuPy or the, the Rapids um, uh, ecosystem of packages provide a lot of um, similar functions that can use the GPUs. If you're doing a lot of machine learning, um, you're probably already using PyTorch and TensorFlow um, and maybe even Jax on the CPU, and those libraries also can target the GPU as well. Um, if you want to write kind of your own GPU kernels, um, there's, a, there's ways of kind of doing that in, in Python as well. And you can use Numba, PyOpenCL, PyCuda, or CUDA Python are some um, common, common ways of doing that from Python. And then if you're interested in kind of how do you scale out your Python code to use maybe multiple GPUs or uh, multiple nodes, then um, 
the MPI for Pi plus whatever GPU package you're already using is a way of kind of spreading out to multiple nodes or, or Dask um, is another popular tool for distributed um, Python. Um, and then Kuh Numeric is also um, is, is from new NVIDIA and may, may provide another way of scaling out to multiple nodes, although that one's a bit more experimental at the moment. Um, so what is um, a, a, a Conda environment with some GPU packages look like? So here I've kind of just demonstrated creating a, a basic um, Conda environment where we install KuPy so we can do some work on our GPU. So we module load Python, do our Conda create, and we install Python, NumPy, SciPy, activate our environment, and then we <clears throat> install um, Kupai using pip. Um, and I'll just, I want to call out here that a lot of these GPU packages, there is kind of a tight coupling between the CUDA toolkit and its version. Um, so you typically need to check the package documentation to see what its CUDA toolkit compatibility requirements are and then verify what you have in your environment as well. So once we have all that, we can start up the Python interpreter import kupai as cp and kind of do this very simple we can allocate a three element array on gpu and there we've done some gpu programming in, in python um and i won't dwell too much on this here but the kupai essentially provides um the numpy api um but lets you kind of you uh, operate on GPUs. Um, so there's one added complication, though, is kind of moving data between the CPU or host and the GPU and device. So they have a couple extra functions to kind of move move that data around between the CPU and the, the GPU. Um, you can also combine some of these different frameworks. There's kind of like a, um, a common um, protocol that many of these Python libraries used to um, kind of specify their, the, the GPU memory that their objects use. Um, so you can kind of move data. You can, so here I'm demonstrating um, kind of what a CUDA kernel looks like written in um, Numba CUDA. Um, and I'm also on the right here, I show kind of creating an array using KuPy, passing that um, array to the Numba kernel and then, um, yeah, so you can kind of pass these GPU um, objects between these frameworks. Um, and then a cool feature as well, if you're kind of worried about having like, you know, a CPU code path and a GPU code path, they're kind of, you can probably reuse a lot of the same code you've already written um, because of this um, kind of cool array function protocol where you can use the NumPy API pass it a KuPy array, and it, it recognizes that it's a KuPy array, and it calls the equivalent KuPy.sum function when you pass it through the NumPy.sum function. Um, and this is always a good question, too, that we get a lot when we're first kind of moving stuff over to a G GPU after doing a lot of CPU programming is, is my code a good fit for the GPU? And so, so typically, um, you know, what's good on the GPU is performing computation on, on large arrays or matrices or images. Um, and so some concerns often are, you know, does your data set fit in the GPU memory? So on Perlmutter, each GPU has 40 gigabytes of memory, which is different than like a, the CPU nodes have 512 gigabytes of memory. Um, and then you also want to make sure that IO is not the biggest bottleneck of your application as well. Um, and on the right, I kind of just demonstrate an, a comparison between just multiplying, uh, do it, taking the dot product between two two-dimensional matrices in NumPy and KuPy. So for very small array sizes or matrix sizes, NumPy is actually significant, significantly faster. So it only becomes worth it to really move that um, computation onto the GPU at larger array sizes. So kind of every, every function or algorithm will kind of a different um, turnover point where it becomes worth it to move that over to the GPU. Um, but there is some 
overhead for kind of doing um, computation on the GPU. So if your problem sizes aren't large enough, then you won't see much of a speed up. Okay, so um, yeah, in, in summary, or yeah, just to wrap up, we have a ton of documentation um, on the NERSC docs. Um, and if you ever have any questions, just feel free to reach out um, and open a ticket. I think that's all I have. So if you have any questions, um, I haven't been looking at the docs or if anyone wants to ask a question now, that's all I have.